what a blessed day to see a brand new day. A day to fellowship with saints like you. We want to encourage you as we worship the Father today. Open your spirit, man. Let God know that you are expectant for a word that will change your life. You know why? God is eager to give your life a new meaning. So I want you to open your heart and worship the Father expectant of a miracle. This is Rivers of Joy where we touch light and birth destiny. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for honoring our call this morning. We thank you, Father, because we want to communicate with you. We thank you, Father, because your word says that when two or three are gathered in your name, you will be in our midst. Lord, we accept that you're in our midst this morning. Father, Lord, as we pray, as we sing, as we worship, and we listen to the word, Father, manifest in us manifest in everything we do this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you. We worship and bow before you this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we have praised and we have worshipped him. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Can you be seated, please? Good morning, everybody. God bless you. Greetings from Pastor John, so that I should extend his love to you, and that you shall see him very soon. Amen? Um, I've also been asked to talk about the night of unending praise that will be happening on Friday, the 29th of July. Our choir has also been invited to minister. So come one, come all. It shall be at uh, the Faith City, pro uh, the province headquarters, 9 to 11 Kosoko Street, Ojodubaga. Let's make it there if we can. I'm not sure whether it will be online, but let us... It's, the bus will be going from... If you need more information, you talk to Pastor Femi. Praise the Lord. This morning, um, I've been given <laughs> the onerous task of talking about developing your communication skills. Amen. It, it's not going to be a lecture. We will go from the spiritual to the circular into the spiritual and come back. But what I found that is very important about communication is that it can be the beginning or the end. How we communicate with ourselves, how we communicate with God is very crucial in our lives. Amen. Are we reading Proverbs chapter 15 verse 2? And it says, the tongue of all the wise makes knowledge appealing, but the mouth of a fool belches out foolishness. The tongues of the wise make knowledge appealing, but the mouth of a fool belches out foolishness. What is communication? Communication is a process by which information is exchanged between individuals through a common symbol, system, sign, or a behavior. Communication. Communication is from me to you. How we talk, 
how we understand, how we relate to each other. Why is communication important? In our daily life, communication helps us to build relationships by allowing us to share our experiences and our needs and helps us to connect to one another. So with communication, we connect to each other. For those of you that use Twitter and the rest on Instagram, we connect. Communication helps us to connect. It's the essence of life, allowing us to express our feelings, pass on information and our thoughts, and that's what we need and we use to communicate with each other. The title is Developing Our Communication Skills. Effective communication is the process of exchanging our ideas, our thoughts, our opinions, our knowledge. Right now, I'm communicating with some people. And I dare say as I'm communicating, some people are understanding me and some people are not. For those that do not understand what I'm saying, it means I'm not communicating. For those that understand what I'm saying, then there is a communication. Amen? Are you flowing with me? In communicating, you must receive the message and understand it with clarity, which means when I'm talking, you must understand what I'm saying. It must mean something to you. It must reveal something to you. When you communicate with someone, a lot of us communicate or we think we're communicating. We're saying something to a person who has no clue what you're talking about. Then you're not communicating. We do it in our homes when we're talking to our wives, our spouses. You are talking at your wife. You're not talking to your wife. If your wife does not understand what you are saying to her, you are not communicating. Amen? Do you understand what I'm saying? When we communicate effectively... Both the sender, I am the sender, I'm sending information to you, I'm sending something to you. Then the receiver, that is you, the congregation, you are receiving what I'm saying. Now if you receive what I'm saying and you don't understand it, I'm not communicating. Amen. Am I communicating? Praise God. The two most important types of communication are between man and God. And between human beings. Communication is more than just the ability for me to talk. It's also about listening. As we communicate with God, the first part of the communication is to listen. God's primary way of communication with us is through our prayers. Sometimes we pray to God and we are wondering, ah, is he not answering? In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, the Bible says, His word, so faith cometh from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ. In his word, he communicates to us through the word. So if you're not reading the word, how are you communicating with God? How are you understanding what he wants you to do if you're not reading the word that he has placed on the table before you? If you're not reading this word, how will you communicate? How will you know what he's trying to tell you? I dare say the church at the moment is reading the Bible. And in some places we're struggling for people to read. How will you know what God is saying at this time? Amen? Amen? God also communicates to us through the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14 verse 26, the Bible says, But when the Father sends the advocate as his representative, that is the Holy Spirit. He will teach you everything and remind you of everything that he has told you. If you don't communicate with the Holy Spirit, how far now? How will you know? How will you communicate? How will you understand? Amen. God speaks to all believers through the vehicle of the Bible, which is all we need to equip ourselves for this Christian life of ours. 
All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and it teaches us to do what is right. How do you communicate? Amen. In order to fully understand God's communication with us, we must be diligent to read the Bible. We must be diligent in studying the Bible. We must be diligent in memorizing the Bible and meditate on his word. You must meditate on God's word. If a message is being sent to you, how will you understand it when you're not reading it? When you're not meditating on it? Amen. In order to fully understand God's communication to us, we must open our hearts to his word. There is no shortcut to the process of communicating with God. You must seek biblical re re revelations. You must hear God's voice. Some people say they don't hear from God. You can't hear if you're not reading his word now. The easiest way to hear from him is by studying the word. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. It says the human heart is the most deceitful of all things. And it is desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? You know, I always tell people that, you know, when you meet a person, if you find favor, it's not him, it's God. But if you're not reading the Bible, you'll be thinking human beings are nice people. Yes, now. You begin to ascribe glory to the person that is helping you. It's not you. God is favoring you with that person. The Bible says the hearts of kings are in his hands. You are busy praying for the man. So you to pray to God. That's why when some people speak about a person, it's positive. And other people speak about the same person. It's negative. Because the people who are speaking positive, God has found favor for them with demand. And those that are speaking negative, God has said, Mbano, it's not your time. You must communicate. Amen? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. He said, don't depend on your understanding. As you see things, it's not how it is. The Bible says God directs the affairs of men. It's not you. Off track now. God directs the affairs of men. God directs why they will do Muslim, Muslim ticket. Only God knows why. Maybe for their downfall, who knows? Don't complain, don't make noise. Trust in the word. Trust that God is in control of everything that happens around you. The Bible has said we're a chosen generation. <laughs> eh? Look, when things are happening in Kokoe, it's all your business. Communicate. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy. The devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. That's the word. He's prowling to deceive you, to distract you, so that you miss it. The times we're in, communication is key. Studying your word, talking to people who are reasonable, you will miss it. If you're not careful. In our daily life, communication helps us to build our relationships by allowing us to share our experiences. The things that have happened with me, with you. When we share it, we learn from it. The funny thing about revelation is that when somebody says something or shares an experience to you, you could take it in different ways. What you will pull out of it might be different from what the next person pulls out of it. But the important thing is, did you get the message? Amen? 
There are different types of communication. Communication can be categorized into three. Verbal communication. In which you listen and you speak to a person and get understanding. Right now, I'm verbally communicating to you. I'm speaking. And I'm hoping as I'm speaking, you're listening and you're hearing me and you're understanding me. Number two, written communication in which you read the meaning. It means I will write something. I can write a letter. I can write a memo to you. And you will read it and you will take infer understanding just like when you're reading the Bible. I can say effectively there are like 300 people in this room. Do you know that if all of us read one chapter of the Bible, we might come up with 300 different meanings. As God reveals his mysteries to you. Amen? And all of you can be right. That's how wonderful our God is. All of you can be right. Amen? Number three, nonverbal communication in which you observe people. Look at, as I'm speaking to you, I am gesticulating, I'm doing my hands. I'm trying to add meaning to what I'm saying. Because there's sometimes I will say a thing and they'll listen and they won't understand that. But by the time I just put my leg up, you might understand what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. God will help us. Let us look at those categories again. We spoke about verbal communication, which includes face-to-face can be telephone, it could be radio. I'm talking to you over the phone. Hello, how are you? You know, sometimes I'm speaking to people and I'm listening to the other end and there's a way they're answering. Are you okay? Because I'm listening. Person is not sounding jovial. But that person is communicating something to me. Do you get what I'm saying? Sometimes you wake up in the morning for those of us that are married. And the house is silent. Your wife that is usually making noise. She's very quiet. In my house, that's a signifier that I'm in trouble. I don't know what it means in your house. As so when I wake up to that silence, I'm shaking. Eh, good day. So I'm already in begging mood. I don't know what I've done, but hey, Joma Bidu. Praise the Lord. Then there's non-verbal communication. That's body language. How we dress or how we act. Do you know that sometimes the way you dress sends a message. You know, you could dress and then you walk. Then it's, ah, that guy is a confident guy. It could be, you might be a penniless guy, but you have dressed. Say, ah, that guy is a correct guy. What message are you sending to the people around you? How are you communicating? Do you know that how you dress is so important? You know, a lot of us, you don't take care of how you dress. I dare say you must take care of how you dress. So how you dress makes a statement to people around you. Just dress anyhow. There, yeah, see this one. Problems on his head. Why do they need to you know you have a problem? You're a Christian. Why? You should know you have a problem. We Christians don't have a problem. Do you have a problem? Eh. The Bible says, come to me. Oh, ye. Eh. You should have a problem. Give it to him. He said, he will give you rest. So show them that you have rest. If you don't have rest, you're not a Christian. You're not born again. Eh, hear me well. Because he said, bring it to me. I will carry it for you. Hallelujah. Even a tone of voice communicates. You know how I speak to you? If, I, if I'm ministering to you now very gently, hello, hi. Well, we're talking about written communication here. Some people would only cost me by now. But when I speak this way, 
I'm hitting some people. They're listening to me. They're alert. They're not falling asleep. You must know, you must decide how to communicate, how to get your message across. It's very key. How to speak, when to speak, who to speak to. You might decide between your success and your failure. Amen? Written communication. This includes letters, emails, social media, books, magazines. Today we all can write all sorts of things and ideas online. There's so much information on the web, both false and correct. Do you know that every time they want to scatter this Nigeria, they'll just throw something on the internet. And everybody goes in a frenzy. Let me tell you a secret. Every time you go into a frenzy, it's deliberate. Some people somewhere want you to go into a frenzy. Some people somewhere don't want you to know the truth. So they throw it into the public domain. And it's all over the world. So those of you that live by the internet, I pray you don't die by the internet. I don't know if you watch that. There's this um, advert. Uh, <laughs> on uh, TV. Uh, I think it's Akamata, Samata. One, uh, you, anybody that comes from a Samata village, it's a demon, it's a this, it's a that. And the guy just goes haywire and starts spreading rumors, rumors of war, rumors of peace all over the place. And that's what happens to us in Nigeria. It's so sad. You know, on sites, a lot of times people send things to me and I read it. I send, I say, are you sure? Where did you get the information from? It's so easy to send out wrong information, wrong communication. As we're sitting here, Holy Spirit filled, tongue lashing, full of the Holy Spirit. If somebody just walked through this door and said, bandits are coming, everybody will forget about Jesus and you will run out. Am I correct? You have forgotten who you serve. You have forgotten the I am that I am. That communication. Everybody, oh yeah, out. God will help us. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? Am I communicating well? Praise the Lord. Now God do I An effective communication is a communication between two or more persons. Wherein the intended message is successfully delivered to the receiver and is understood. What does that mean? It means I have said something. I have sent something. And the person that I have sent it to has received it with their full chest and has understood what I'm saying. That's effective communication. But in a lot of instances, we have sent a message. Sometimes, it has been watered down or drained. It gets to the receiver and he has been left to just interpret it as they see fit. And you, as the person who has sent the message, you have not bothered to calm down and ensure that the message was received well. I've been in situations where I've said things to people and they've just got upset. And I'm sitting there, ah, what did I say now? Have you found yourself in that position before? You've said something and the person just gets angry. And uh, kill her, we kill us what did I, what did I say? Especially those of us that are married, I'm sure. You have found that that's yourself in that position where you're talking to your wife. She just wife, I'm not saying you're, you're, you're not. I'm just saying that we didn't send the message properly. 
and we've sent a message and she has got upset. And you're busy asking her, ah, but that's, hold on, hold on. No, you said this. I didn't say, ah, yes, that's what I heard it with my ears. And it, instead of you, the communicator, to calm down and say, okay, calm, 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 calm. You say, ah, but that's what I said. Now, what are you telling me? That means you, your ears are, you know, before you know it, you have a war on your hands. And if you're like me, you run away. Communication is important in the home. It's important with your children. It's important in your office. And it's mostly important in church. Amen? In other words, the communication is said to be effective when all the parties, sender, receiver, in the communication assign similar meanings to the message that has been sent. That means I've sent a message, I've said something, I meant it in a particular manner, and the person who's received it has understood it the way I meant it. Amen. Is anybody feeling me right this morning? The effective communication includes not just the way you use words, but also covers several other skills. The non-verbal, the ability to understand your emotions and the other person's emotions, as well as whom you are communicating, engaging, and listening to. It's like now I'm talking to you. As I'm speaking to you, I'm measuring your pulse by your responses. What does that mean? It means that if I feel that you're not getting what I'm saying, I repeat it in another way if I can. Amen? Please, don't take this lightly. Communication is so important. Especially in our Christian lives. Amen? A lot of conflict can be avoided if we communicate well. Amen? There are five skills that are necessary for successful communication. Let me just go through them. Number one. In communicating, you must be able to listen. You must listen. Listen to what the other person is saying. When you say something, pause and listen to the feedback. It's the most important part of communication. Successful listening is not just about understanding what is said or the, or the information that is written. But it's also about feeling the body language and the message that the, 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 the speaker is sending to you. Let me give you a good example. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Did you hear that? Hello, day. That's the difference. That's small difference between good morning and my shouting. You could even be shouting and you're not meaning it out of malice or anything. But somebody is having a headache from that good morning. So can you imagine you walked into your office or you came into the church. In fact, let's use church. You walk into the church and the first thing is you see is Pastor John. Good morning everybody. Yes. Praise the Lord. Careful listening can also create an environment which everyone feels safe to express themselves. You know, when people are talking, don't shut them down. Listen. You know, I always tell my, some of my people, I say, look, even when you're wrong, I'll listen to you. Because you know what? When you take time out to listen to that person's issue, even though you might think it's a non-issue, but the truth is it's an issue for that person. Even if it's a non-issue for you. Because it's not a problem that is difficult for you. It's a problem to the person speaking to you. So listen. Sometimes just listening to that person makes that person feel appreciated and safe. 
I've learned to do that in my house. So when you don't listen, it's a problem. So you listen. When your wife is pouring out her heart to you, maybe, yes, you've had a long day. It's been difficult for you. Sit down and listen. And listen means listen. So you must understand what they're telling you. Not just stay there, you know, emotionally, your body is there, but the rest of you is not there. Guys, do you feel me? Husbands, praise the Lord. Number two, straight talking. Conversation is the best form of communication. And one must not neglect its importance. Even a simply, simply friendly conversation with our friends, colleagues, can build mutual trust between us. Hello, hi, good morning. How are you today? The Lord bless you. Do you know that? <laughs> when you meet people like, ah, bless you, bless you, bless you. Ah, they'll begin to feel blessed. They'll begin to see you as a friend and not an enemy. At least, you won't say God bless you. If you're an enemy, you won't be saying God bless you to the person. A healthy dose of chatting with an unknown person can lead to a various opportunities. Do you know that initially, when I, when, I, when I fly, when I get on the plane, I don't talk to anybody. I just sit in my chair, maybe the person next to me, oh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, and then I face my front. But I've realized I'm being antisocial. I've realized that I'm actually sending off the wrong signals. Can you imagine? Somebody and I are flying from Abuja to Lagos. We sat, he sat beside me or she sat beside me and I just faced front. I didn't say good morning. I didn't say good afternoon. I didn't say good evening. I didn't say hello. I just faced my front. And I'm now here in church on Sunday talking about communication. And this person happens to walk into this church. And the person is sitting and saying, this one that I sat next to in the plane, Haba. Do you feel me? You're not friendly. That's even an opportunity to speak the word, to talk about Christ. It's an opportunity. But we think, we're, maybe we think we're being holy. So, Miss Front, I Front looking up onto the hills from whence cometh your help. In the play. In the bus. Looking up. Not communicating. Do you know that you're actually giving negative communication? You're sending a wrong signal. Do you, can you imagine if Jesus, and for me, Jesus is the ultimate communicator. Can you look at when Jesus was always walking. He was always, always sending out positive messages. Even when the disciples want to get Jesus into trouble, they say, stop there. Let thee behind me. Come. Let us talk. Let us speak. What is your issue? That's who we're supposed to em emulate. Amen? Number three, non-verbal communication. When we talk about things that matter to us, we send a lot of non-verbal messages. Do you know that when you're talking about something that you like, have you seen the way your body will be vibrating? I know some people, when they're talking about football, or they're talking about their team, you will see the body biggie, biggie, biggie. You will, see, you will know that, eh, eh, this person loves this team. When the person is speaking about something they don't like, drop shoulders, sadness over, it's non-verbal. When you're walking or sitting in a place somewhere, Somebody is looking at you. What messages are you communicating? Are you communicating that, oh, that guy, don't go near him. Oh. He's a wicked so-and-so. Just by them sitting and looking at you. Our Savior was a magnet. A magnet of men and women. When, wherever he stood, people started coming. What about you? When you stand or sit, do people run from you or they come to you? Let me tell you, there is no glory or joy in people running away from you. If you think so, you're a bloody liar. God forgive me. It's not true. Our Jesus that we imitate attracted people. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. So who you resemble? 
What are you communicating? Our Jesus was smiling, always ready to help. Did they fear come near himself? Ah, don't go there. It's a problem, you. That's not what our Jesus was doing. So if anywhere, somewhere in your being, that the repelling people is your objective, I'm sorry, it's wrong. Amen? People read you by the way you behave. By the way you talk. By the way you do things. And if that's how you are, let's begin to change. Amen? Number four. The mighty word stress. Stress management. In small quantities, stress can be very useful or disuseful in encouraging work. However, when stress becomes consistent, it begins to take its effect on you. Have you noticed a lot of people, when they're under stress, they don't communicate well? When you want to see me communicating is when I'm broke. At home, I hide it well outside, but inside, they know that I'm broke. Because I send those messages. You know, some of us don't even know how to hide. Even outside, we're sending that message. I'm broke, don't come near me. Or I will bite you. God will help us. Number five. Emotion control. Empathy. We, in communicating, we must be able to control our emotions. You know, the different emotions that we begin to emit from us, that we begin to radiate, says a lot about us. You know, people don't need to talk to you. All they just need to see you and see how you behave. See how you are talking. And they will just take the message. Do you know you can communicate hello without actually opening your mouth? Do you agree? I can say hello to you without saying hello. And I can say goodbye to you without opening my mouth and saying goodbye. Have you not seen where people are walking towards people and they just give them that look? You goodbye, Neil. Which one are you? Praise the Lord. If you're not aware of the feelings that you emit, you will not be able to express yourself the way you want. Amen. Amen. Control of your emotions provides you with tools to understand others, yourself, and also the message that you are sending. What are the dangers of bad communication? Conflict. When you communicate in a bad fashion, you can cause strife. If somebody doesn't understand what you're saying and is frustrated, you will cause chaos. It's so important that when we communicate, we are clear and concise. It must be very clear what the person is saying. When there's bad communication, there's misunderstanding. Like I like going back to the home. When you and your spouse misunderstand each other, it causes strife in the house. It causes tension. Even in church, in our units, in our departments, because someone has said something and you don't understand it or didn't understand it the way it was said, it causes strife. This is why sometimes I say to people that when I send an email, I always follow it up with a phone call. Because in many cases, I've seen emails sent and you completely get the wrong Wrong meaning of that email. Some people don't have email etiquette. So can you imagine when you write something and you put one, two, three, four, or five exclamation marks? It means you are shouting. Some people don't know that they use, they use exclamation mark like a full stop. So you must control your emotions. Amen. Amen. 
Bad communication also breeds distrust. The person will not trust you. And the whole, in fact, the whole issues begin to deteriorate and you have issues. Brethren, please, let's develop good communication skills. Amen? Now, the function of the Holy Spirit's communication with us is first to convict us of our sin. You know, when you have the Holy Spirit in you, there's a way that you know that what you're doing is bad. And that's why it's important. Don't separate yourself from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your guide. It's your navigator. Let me tell you something. If you are devoid of the Holy Spirit, you won't have conscience. You will not. If I go back to that passage in the Bible, it says that the heart of man is desperately wicked. It's the Holy Spirit that separates us. So when you have the Holy Spirit and you think, oh, that's why when you see certain things and you have a moral compass and a conscience, it's the Holy Spirit that is convicting you. It's not normal. Where the abnormal ones go, not them. A man who has no conscience, the Bible has already written it there. You don't have conscience normally. So when you see people who err, don't look at them in disdain and disgust. You're the privileged one because you have the Holy Spirit working in you. Because if you're devoid of the Holy Spirit, you'll be exactly the way they are. Devoid of conscience and moral compass. Amen? When Jesus went away, his disciples were greatly distressed because they had lost his comforting presence. But he promised to send them this Holy Spirit to comfort them, console them, and guide them because they belong to Christ. The Holy Spirit will guide each and every one of us because we belong to Christ. Amen. The Holy Spirit also bears witness to our spirits that we belong to him and therefore assures us continually of our salvation. That's why this communication is key. You must communicate with God. Because without that Holy Spirit, we're in trouble. Amen? The Spirit communicates with the Father on our behalf and intercedes and prays for us before His throne. Especially when we are weary and we are downcast. That's why communicating with the Holy Spirit for your rest and your peace is very important. Praise the Lord. Our primary mode of communication with God is prayer. We are to go to God in prayer for all our needs. When we lack something, God says that it is not from his inability to provide, but it's from our lack of diligence to ask. You don't have, and you don't ask. Faith are complete. That's so. Amen. We must examine how we communicate with our fellow man. It goes without saying that filthy communication should not escape the lips of a Christian. Whether in jest, whether by joke, what we say that comes out of our mouth is very important. There's some things I hear Christians say and I'm afraid. Because you're not communicating to the other people that you believe in Christ. There's certain things that should not be heard from our lips. Communication is everything. Even in your evangelism, if you're communicating non-verbally in the opposite direction, the person you're trying to evangelize will run from you. Amen? In Colossians 3, 8, James speaks clearly on this subject. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. When we speak in anger, we fail to show God's love. Whether speaking to a family member or a stranger. You know, someone, ah, is he not my brother? And so what if he's your brother? Is that why you are dis disrespecting him? It doesn't matter. 
What we do at home is what we should do outside. How you treat the outside is how you should treat your own, your, your, your own, your own family. Amen? Some of us treat outside as with all the respect possible then treat the people inside with total disrespect. May that not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Our time is fast spent. Believers should constantly examine their communication. We should consider the tone of the way we speak and all the forms of communication that we use, whether it is WhatsApp, email, we should never allow the safety of a computer screen lead us to conflict. Sometimes some of us hide behind our phones. We send out horrible messages to people. God forgive us. When engaged in conversation, as we prepare to speak, we should ask ourselves these questions. Is what we're saying, is it true? Is what we're saying, is it sincere? Is what we're saying, is it concise and is it clear? Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4 chapter 15 says, Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of our church. Ephesians 4.25 So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth. For we are all parts of the same body. We must speak truth. But truth in love. Amen? Ephesians 4.29 Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful. So that your words will be an encouragement to those that hear them. When you're speaking, when you're talking to people, the people around you, are they respecting? Ah, listen to what he said. It makes sense. Listen to what he said. He's glorifying God. Listen to what he said. Ah, it makes sense. Amen. Ephesians 4 chapter 32 says, Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. Just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. You know, some of us ask for, when we have conflict, we ask to be forgiven. Meanwhile, the body language is saying something else. Hey, I've forgiven you now, especially our wives. Joe, please now. And she says, yes, okay, I've forgiven you. What? She's still not giving you food. She's still not talking to you. Hello? People will be wondering why I'm talking about wives today. Don't worry, my wife is not like that too. Praise the Lord. Communication is key. How we communicate with one another. How we communicate with our families. How we communicate with our children. Do you know that the way we communicate with our children is very important? I was having a discussion with Pastor Femi earlier on. Do you know that children don't care what you say to them? It is what you show them, they see you doing. Is what is what makes the biggest impact to children. If you like, tell your child, don't, 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 don't. And he sees you doing it. He will do what you're doing, not what you're saying. How we communicate is so, so important. And I believe that God Almighty, the revealer of all things, reveal to us how to communicate better in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us stand. I want us to pray. I want us to pray for the grace to be able to communicate with one another. Because if we communicate well, there will be less strife. There will be less chaos. And there will be less mistrust around us. In the times we're in right now, there's so much mistrust around. There's so much deception that we don't even know what to believe anymore. But I believe that as long as we have the Holy Spirit in us, we will be discerning in everything that we see and that we care. So I want us to pray that in our own form of communication that God should give us grace to communicate well among ourselves. Let's begin to pray.
Father, Lord, give me the grace to communicate. Let me communicate better. Let me communicate better with my spouse. Let me communicate better with my child. Let me communicate better with my people in my department, in my office. Father, give me the grace and the clarity to communicate when I'm evangelizing. Because I want to get your message and good news across to for everybody that will hear me. Father, Lord, give me the grace to communicate. Imbibe in me the ability to listen. Imbibe in me the ability to speak, to understand, to have empathy for everybody around me. Imbibe in me the understanding to understand everybody's emotion around me. Father, let me be an open vessel for you. Let me communicate, Lord. Father, Lord, let me study your word. Let me communicate with you directly. Let me understand what you're saying to me. Father, give me the grace to communicate. Communicate with me, Father. Let the Holy Spirit dwell in me and never depart from me. Father, I dwell and I wish to communicate better. I wish you to communicate with my colleagues, with my friends, and everyone around me. Even in my body language, Lord, let it speak positive and not negative. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help me. Jehovah, help me. Oh, what an explosive service. I'm so excited in my spirit. Man. You know why? Because I got a word from God. Did you too? The joy of the Lord remains our strength as long as we keep abiding in the Word. I hope you were blessed by this ministration of the choir, the ministration by the man of God himself. I want to encourage you as you go for this week. Stay in the Word of God. Keep speaking it. Don't stop talking it. Because we overcome by the Word of God in our spirit, man. Enjoy the rest of your week and do join us next week, same time. This is Reverse of Joy, where we touch life and birth destinies. Hallelujah!